In September 2014, a concerning incident unfolded during a police accountability march in Lynn, Massachusetts, shedding light on officers allegedly breaking the law while being captured on camera. The incident was documented by Ms. Bay, the founder of the Bay State Examiner, an independent media source focused on police interactions and accountability. While attending the march, Ms. Bay noticed an undercover police officer trailing the protest in an unmarked vehicle. Seeking accountability, she approached the officer to request his name and badge number. In a startling turn of events, the officer reportedly hit her with his vehicle. Howdy. Uh, sorry to bother again. Oh, hey. Uh, I'm on private property and you get to see my in the back okay. lot. You were on private property. You asked me and you took your time. I need your IDs. IDs? <laughs> Can I have yours? I don't have one on me. Oh, no, all right. Well, go to the chief. We are. Sure. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Uh, can we speak to the chief? Uh, this officer has invited us to speak with him. This incident prompted Miss Bay to take matters into her own hands. Days later, Miss Bay ventured to the Lynn Police Station's back lot in pursuit of evidence regarding the vehicle that had allegedly struck her. Her efforts were met with resistance from an unidentified officer who swiftly expelled her from the premises. Undeterred, she entered the police department building to file a formal complaint about the incident and to seek officer identifications. The encounter within the police station would go on to raise a myriad of legal and ethical concerns. The situation escalated when the officers on duty refused to identify themselves and labeled Ms. Bay's presence as trespassing on private property. Massachusetts law, however, stipulates that police officers are required to carry identification cards and display them upon a lawful request. This refusal constituted a violation of this legal obligation. You're welcome what to back there and take a look at them. Okay. Oh, after? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, we need your IDs now. I'm not interested in showing that at this count. No? I'm not. Yeah. All right, so you guys are refusing? All right, then we'll just leave. There you go. So we want to check the chief. Yeah, I was going to say, you've invited yeah. us to speak no, with the chief. He's a busy guy. Oh. I'm just suggesting we talk to the chief. Well, I yeah, but I guess uh, apparently he's you, not. You, I'm sorry, what's... You just told him to do that, right? No, you told us to talk to the chief. Yeah, and you came around here and he's not coming down here. So. Oh, right. So maybe you should call him. Call him. And make an appointment with him. Got it. Okay. Okay. We can do that. Um, All right. May I have both of your names and ID cards? Badge 88. Badge 88. Badge 88? Yeah. 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 Yep. The officers ordered Ms. Bay to vacate the premises, accusing her of creating a disturbance and trespassing. In response, she asserted her right to continue recording for news gathering purposes. A crucial distinction emerged. While Massachusetts acknowledges the right to record police, this right is not absolute and must adhere to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions that safeguard officer safety, informants, and victims. The incident also underscored the nuanced relationship between the First Amendment and trespassing laws. While Ms. Bay's intent to file a complaint justified her presence to some extent, officers claimed she was trespassing and sought to remove her from the building. Legal precedents highlighted the complexity of these issues, including the right to record police versus the limitations imposed on such activities within police stations. Not with you. Who do I make a complaint with? The chief's the best guy. The chief's the best guy? Yeah. Okay. So make an appointment. Okay. What's up with that? What is it that you're looking for? Uh, well, I found the car that hit me on Friday. I was recording it earlier. Um, okay. It's out back. Okay, and what are you doing going in private property videotaping police cars? What private property? The property that's parked out back there posted is no trespassing, authorized personnel only. I didn't see that. Well, it's posted all over the entrances to that parking lot. Interesting. It is interesting, but it is also posted. Okay. You're subject to arrest for going back into private property. Am I being arrested? Place huh? Am I being arrested? I said you are subject to arrest. Okay. But Despite these legal complexities, officers' conduct raised questions about their intentions and commitment to accountability. Their refusal to take Ms. Bay's claim seriously and their hindrance of her ability to file a complaint cast doubts on their willingness to engage transparently with civilian concerns. The encounter raised concerns about the potential misuse of laws to deter individuals from lodging complaints against law enforcement officers. In the aftermath of the incident, Ms. Bay submitted a Freedom of Information Act request to the Lynn's Record Department. The officer in charge will be out with you when he gets a second to okay. talk to you and get your complaint. Uh, well, somebody, somebody does need to tell okay. him that that's what's going well, on. Well, if he's already done that, then your complaint has been filed with document. There's information that he literally doesn't have because I didn't have it until right now. 
when I went back, he found the car. So I would like to tell him that the car is back there, that it's been repaired, even though they didn't report items. Ah, well, you know what, actually, I'm filming this for news gathering purposes at this point. Yet her efforts were met with resistance, and it remains uncertain whether the department ever responded to her request. Her documentation of the events and her subsequent efforts to highlight the challenges faced by citizens seeking accountability and transparency within law enforcement agencies. Now let's move on to the next investigation. In a noteworthy incident that unfolded on June 5, 2015, the spotlight fell on Michael Hoffman, a private investigator and an advocate for the First Amendment. The scenario took place in Jacksonville, Florida, as Hoffman engaged in conducting surveillance as part of a case. His objective was to track down an individual's movements and actions across multiple locations. However, the situation took an unexpected turn when the person under surveillance alleged that Hoffman was stalking her. Can I ask why you pulled me over, sir? I pulled you over because the young ladies came over there and said you've been following her since she left the airport yesterday. So I want to know who you are. Have I committed a crime? No, but I'm conducting an investigation. Have you been following that young lady? I mean, if you're an investigator, investigate away. But if you're somebody harassing her or stalking her, that's against the law. Me pulling you over to find out who you are is me doing my job. Am I free to go? No, you are not. Not until I find out who you are. I'm conducting an investigation. Do you have your driver's license, registration, and proof of insurance on you? Have you pulled me for a traffic violation, sir? No, sir. I've already explained that to you. Now, you can play the back and forth rigmarole. This accusation prompted a response from law enforcement, specifically an officer from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. The encounter between Hoffman and the officer was marked by a clash of rights and principles. As the officer initiated a traffic stop, the interaction was captured on camera and later disseminated on the Awakening the Masses YouTube channel. The video depicted the exchange as the officer sought to ascertain the veracity of the stalking claim. He engaged Hoffman in conversation, asking about his identity, purpose, and whether he was an investigator. Hoffman's response was calculated and assertive. He began by asking the officer the reason for pulling him over, which initiated a dialogue regarding the stalking allegation. The officer cited the complainant's assertion that Hoffman had been tailing her since previous day. Despite Hoffman's protestations, the officer deemed it necessary to investigate the matter. He explained that his actions were guided by the need to ascertain whether Hoffman was involved in harassing or stalking behavior, which is legally prohibited. Oh, tell him to come up here. We're at the um, 8100 block of Arlington Express. I don't answer questions, Deputy. You don't answer questions. You just stalk young lady. Just stand by then. Stand by. Your name and badge number, Deputy? Your name and badge number, Deputy? Badge number, sir? Simpson 66190. Masinson, M A S I N S I N. Sir, I'd like to know why I'm being detained. So we want to find, we want to, someone's saying that you're stop, claiming you're stopping us. What is that? Is that, are you an investigator or anything? Okay, let me make this clear, sir. I would like for you to articulate what crime you. The crux of the disagreement hinged on the rights invoked by Hoffman. When the officer requested identification, Hoffman invoked his Fifth Amendment rights, a constitutional privilege against self-incrimination. This assertion caused a pivotal shift in the interaction, as Hoffman insisted he would only speak in the presence of legal counsel. The officer, seemingly perplexed by this response, requested that Hoffman bring his attorney to the scene for further questioning. Hoffman's stance was rooted in legal principles. He argued that during a Terry stop, law enforcement could pose a limited number of questions to establish identity and to determine if any suspicions were valid. However, Hoffman remained steadfast in asserting that he was under no obligation to answer questions without the presence of legal representation, especially considering the potential implications of his responses. The officer's actions were grounded in the assumption that a stalking accusation, combined with a corroborated vehicle description, constituted reasonable suspicion for a stop and investigation. This view aligned with legal precedent, exemplified by the 2002 case of United States v. Soka Law, which allows law enforcement to act on a tip if it bears indicia of reliability. The Supreme Court has ruled that reasonable suspicion necessitates a particularized and objective basis for suspecting wrongdoing.
Despite the differing interpretations, the encounter eventually concluded with the officer permitting Hoffman to leave. The tension between rights and responsibilities underscored the complexity of police-citizen interactions. Some professional courtesy and treat me with respect I deserve. I did. What is your name and badge number? Well, okay, yeah, let me see, sir. I gave you mine. Zero, zero, five, one. Thank you. I appreciate that, Deputy. Was that so hard? No. The law courtesy, states, sir. the law states, I don't have to give my name and uh, information unless you suspect me of committing a crime. I don't. Then am I free to go? Because this is an illegal detainment. At this time. This is an illegal detainment. Because like I said, your criminal action description we were given. I respect doesn't that. Doesn't mean I respect you're guilty. That. I respect that. You're, you're talking to an ex-law guilty. enforcement officer, everybody. Now I understand you're doing no fault with that. You are doing your job. Okay. And the mere fact that I'm exercising my legal rights does not make shedding light on the importance of understanding legal rights during such encounters. Hoffman's case emphasized that individuals have the right to remain silent and request legal counsel during a Terry stop, while officers must balance their duty to investigate with the requirement to respect constitutional rights. The incident became a case study in navigating the delicate balance between law enforcement's duty to investigate and an individual's rights to privacy and legal protection. As the video disseminated, it sparked discussions about the scope of police authority during stops, the validity of accusations, and the intricacies of the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. Michael Hoffman's assertiveness in upholding his rights and the officer's attempts to fulfill his duty encapsulated a pivotal moment in the ongoing dialogue about law enforcement practices and individual freedom. Now let's take a look at the next investigation. In April 2020, a situation involving Keelan Hill and Denver police officers unfolded after a minor traffic incident on Interstate 25 in Colorado. The incident escalated into legal disputes, allegations of rights violations, and concerns over police conduct. The episode began when Keelan Hill, age 25, called 911 after a minor collision with two other drivers. Officer Thomas Ludwig of the Denver Police Department arrived at the scene and initiated discussions with the other individuals involved while Hill was being evaluated by paramedics inside an ambulance. The situation took a turn when Hill exited the ambulance and noticed Officer Ludwig searching his vehicle without consent. What are you doing? Step into me. Oh. What the f is in my on. face? What Don't think so, dude. What are you stopping the cops for, man? I did not ask you to get no, out of my car. No, I watch you. I got you on my video camera. I asked you to get out of my car. That's it. You're being an a to everybody. I'm not. Yes, this. you are. Sir, come here. Oh. This is my door, brother. Ow. This is going to get my car. You know what What just happened? You want ankle monitor too, huh? Oh. On probation, I'm sure. Uh, I'm not on probation. The probation officer's gonna love that. I'm not on probation at all. The officer claimed he detected the odor of marijuana, implying that this gave him the authority to conduct the search. The legality of such searches based on marijuana odor varies across states, and in Colorado, where recreational marijuana is legal, the odor can contribute to probable cause for a search. However, legal nuances exist. Hill confronted Officer Ludwig about the search, leading to a heated argument. The officer's aggressive response escalated the tension instead of employing de-escalation techniques. While Hill's behavior might have prompted concern, it's questionable whether it warranted the officer's level of aggression. Hill was arrested and charged with interference with police activity. These charges were later dropped, but the incident spurred Hill to file a lawsuit against the city of Denver and the involved officers. I'm not intoxicated at all. Go ahead and have a seat in there. Go for it. Okay, have a seat. Y'all are illegally have searching my car. Have a seat. Have a seat. Put your Pick feet up. up. ID, bro. Push yourself all the way back. He alleged violations of his First and Fourth Amendment rights and claimed damages, including missing a master's degree final exam due to his incarceration. Critiques of the officer's conduct centered on several points. Firstly, despite the possible legality of the initial search, the decision to arrest Hill was deemed unnecessary and potentially unconstitutional. Officer Ludwig's unprofessional behavior, particularly his failure to de-escalate the situation, garnered criticism. His confrontational approach escalated the disagreement rather than diffusing it 
highlighting the significance of emotional awareness in police interactions. Moreover, the officers faced criticism for their response to Hill's request for medical assistance. According to the Denver Police Department's Operation Manual, officers are required to provide medical attention to individuals in custody. Hill's expression of uncertainty about his injury should have prompted a more compassionate response from the officers, as opposed to the callous indifference displayed. This incident underscores the complexities of police interactions and the importance of effective de-escalation techniques. While the legality of certain actions can be ambiguous, officers should prioritize public safety and citizens' rights. Emotions and situational awareness play crucial roles in determining the outcome of such encounters.